what does it feel like to sit on the stage of your own theater? It's nice. <laughs> this is yours. Uh, <clears throat> now, if I had a chance to run the theater again for a couple of years, I would take it. Would you? Mm -hmm. Alan? No. <laughs> I'm too old, but I would. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> age is something that uh, creeps up on you. <laughs> and uh, at a certain age, they tell you you can't do things, but you want to do them anyway. So there. So the theater is lovely. And I would call it Young People's Theater again. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Um, it's interesting about the power of life versus uh, uh, TV or movies or whatever, that the children respond to the live in a different way than they respond to what they see uh, uh, on TV. And how? They are, they are mesmerized by the live magic that goes on. They don't get mesmerized by TV. They like it and they have fun and they enjoy it and they watch it a lot, but they don't get mesmerized the way you see an audience in a live theater. I went to see uh, with one of my grandchildren, the six-year-old, Peter Pan at Stratford. It is unbelievable. Now, I watched the audience, and they, again, they came with their seven-year-old, but they had to bring their three-year-old. There wasn't a peep or a cry in the whole audience. And, and the three-year-olds didn't understand really what was going on. But they're mesmerized by, because it's live. It's a wonderful production. And yet the vast majority of young uh, people will never see live performance. They'll only see television and film. Well, they will see some live performances in the schools. We'll look into that. <laughs> I'll get you together. <laughs> we'll look into I that. I think uh, you will see uh, not all children, but most children will have something. They will have uh, a puppet show. They will have uh, uh, a dance. They will have singing. They will have, they will have some live. Some of them are lucky enough to have it in a, on a stage, and some of it have it in, in, in the gymnasium, mm -hmm. where the stage has to sort of be created. Right. Jan always used to say, to the audience, you can go this far, but you can't come this far. This is mine. This is yours. So he tried to create something that would be like a stage he used to take with him in the, in the uh, um, uh, car, in the uh, station wagon, uh, things that were like platforms. Right. And he tried to use that just to make it feel like, like a stage. But I would say that you will find that they will get something. Not as much as we would like them to, but something which they didn't have in the 40s and in the 50s. Yes, no, I, I, there is a, when you consume a medium like television or film, you are made passive. And what you're describing is someone sitting in a live performance. You're mesmerized because you're active and you right. are a participant right. in that experience. And what was truer in the 60s and 70s and 80s was a far more participation. Yes. But the advance of media and the advance of television channels and specialty channels uh, means that more and more of experiencing drama is in the passive kind of consumer part. And f a smaller and smaller percentage is actually young students and people going to live performances. And it's a, 
uh, it's not a good trend no. that we're on and I don't know how to you know how to get back up that hill again I think uh, 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 first of all the material is in most live theater is more interesting and secondly the live performance gets an emotional reaction whereas I don't think TV gets that kind of emotional reaction that uh, uh, a person gets in a live theater. Now, if it's bad theater, then that's not good reaction. <laughs> but if it's exciting theater, it's, uh, it can't compare, nothing can compare to it. Well, dark materials. I mean, the National Theatre has had this enormous success with James Pullman's books called The Dark Materials. And uh, they've run the whole trilogy at the National Theatre. And it's, it's theatre for family and they're, and they're books for young people. But they're, I mean, the National Theatre of Great Britain has made them into a major theatre series and it's a, it's a very powerful piece. So it can be done. And War Horse, another one. Uh, Again, another story for young people yeah. was again taken by the National Theatre, uh, Nicholas Heitner, and made into a major new piece. So, I mean, that's my, I, I love Peter Pan, I'm glad we're doing that, but it's, uh, that's a story from a hundred years ago, right. and where's the initiative to create Canadian versions of the War Horse and Canadian versions of, uh, of the Dark Materials, and that's contemporary British writing that's taken right But that's going right to start the with the writer. And the producer of the theater, yeah. and the and the uh, the producer and the artistic director of the theater, who think, well, I won't reach for, uh, yeah. you know, name recognition, uh, Peter Pan, no matter how good it is, I will actually create, and I'll go and find these books, right. and I'll do that. But that's risk, and that's money. Um, I remember when we did, uh, we used to do plays at the Science Center. I mean, we did plays at the Toronto Workshop at Jane Mallet Theatre, I mean, where, before we had the theatre. So I always, uh, because one of the big things besides going into schools was to talk the schools into sending the children by bus to the theatre. Uh, and that was another fight for money because a school gets X amount of money for trips. That's the zoo, the ROM. So you have to fight for them to give up one trip to the zoo or to the ROM and take a trip to the theater. Now at the beginning it was difficult because they didn't want to, I mean, those were exciting places. And there wasn't new money coming in, so you had to lure them into trying once not to go to the ROM and go to the theater. And uh, when we were uh, at the Science Center Theater, which was larger than uh, uh, the other theaters we were at, we had the bus, the kids bust in. And one of the plays was a play I commissioned that was called Inuk and the Sun. Mm -hmm. And uh, in London, they had uh, international festivals for children once a year, or once every second year. Uh, Moscow had the, the second year, they alternated. And we took Inuk and the Sun to London to that international festival. And what was interesting was that we did an original play that was, would, material would not have been known in, to English children or to German children and so on. And uh, we were the only ones who did not bring a known play. So right. only the Brits did and we did. It was yeah. very interesting. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, I don't know. I, as you say, it's all between uh, a director and a writer yeah. to get into cahoots. And, a and board it's difficult that will suppress. because then you have to get the board, then you have to get the money to produce it, and then yep. you have to sell it. It's and a board who will, will support an artistic direction of a theater yeah. and not just a commercial direction right. of a theater. And the boards now more and more won't take artistic chances 
either in their hiring of the artistic director or their approval of a season that doesn't have name recognition, that doesn't have the musical. And that's all the regionals have, retract, have retreated in Canada, retreated to more safe commercial uh, programming. So they're not commissioning? Uh... No. It's not good. And well, it's in the board level, and it's then in the artistic director level, because they're hired by the boards. Um, and it's all been a retreat from... Uh... See, I'm not in favor of artistic directors, as you know. Right. I am in favor of a artistic producer or producer. Because I think that uh, 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 a producer has a more visionary. Because they're not doing something for themselves. They're doing it for the audience that they hope to get. They can hire, they can commission. They are not, they are not as personally involved to do things that they want to do. Thanks, Susan. It's a pleasure to speak to you in the Susan Douglas Rubish Theatre. What a great theatre. <laughs> Thanks.